This is a message for Editor Demigod. If for some reason this becomes a full breakdown, do not, under any circumstances, title this video, Felicity's Mom Has Got It Going On. I know that you want to prove to the internet that you're cultured, and you think that by making a reference to Stacy's Mom by Fountains of Wayne, that will prove that. But don't. It's just gonna be weird. Fine, episode demigod. Fucking Killjoy takes the fun out of everything. Seriously, can you believe this asshole? Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, my name is Demi Schmerter here, hello and welcome back to another video and welcome back to another episode of Arrowverse Analysis. The overwhelming majority of Arrow fans hate Season 4. And yeah, there's a lot of justification for that, I'm not saying there's not. Season 4 killed Laurel, gave all of her superpowers, had a villain that felt like he'd come out of a completely different show, further ruined Malcolm's character, and very obviously had the worst fight scenes of the whole show. Plus, this green effect that they put over Oliver's costume to brighten his new suit up was very badly pasted on and looked horrible in most lighting. If you hate season 4, your opinions and feelings are just as valid as anyone else's. However, season 4 left such a bad taste in people's mouths that it didn't just impact their opinions on the rest of the show, but also on the seasons that came before. And don't get me wrong, The Secret Origin of Felicity Smoke isn't the show's best episode, or even the season's best episode, but it's definitely an episode that gets an unnecessary amount of flack. I wanted to make this episode into a full breakdown because it's kind of the perfect encapsulation of a good episode that got ruined by season 4 retroactively. Was it ever the show's highest rated episode? No. But the fact that I have to acknowledge that to the audience over and over kind of proves the point I wanted to make here. My point is that you don't have to let later seasons of a show affect your opinions of the earlier ones. You are allowed to like this episode, even if you don't like how the storylines this episode started ended up playing out. If you dislike this episode on its own merits, that's fine. I just watched the thing so I can understand that. The drama between Oliver and Thea is very petty, there was no build-up to introducing Felicity's mom. Diggle's daughter is completely forgotten about the scene after she's introduced. 2014 computers didn't have built-in Wi-Fi hotspots, and some modern computers even don't. So saying how Ray's watch basically replaces your computer, and that being the way they get out of the situation in the final act of the episode, is dumb. The action scenes in this one aren't the best Arrow's ever had to offer, and especially towards the end of the episode, this guy's performance sucked. Just because we used to screw it doesn't mean I won't use this gun. If you dislike this episode because you can't get past those things, fair enough. I ain't got beef with you. But if you dislike this episode because of the amount of focus Felicity and her mom got in season four, I think that's stupid. Saying that is like if someone who's been a big fan of the MCU since phase one said that it was always terrible because phases four and five have been pretty spotty. That's a stupid way of looking at the MCU, because there's a lot of great projects in it, and saying it was always bad because of the recent dip in quality is dismissive of the previous great projects. And the same rings true in this episode. Arrow's basically always been great at shifting the focus away from Oliver and letting him play a supporting role in the episode. There's tons of episodes, especially in Season 2, that are told from someone else's perspective. For Dig, it's Keep Your Enemies Closer and Suicide Squad. For Laurel, it was blind spots. Even Felicity got an episode told from her perspective in Time of Death, which was one of the most underrated episodes of the whole show. And this is another one that, while it certainly has its flaws, has a lot of things that it does right. And dismissing that just because you don't like that season 4 focused on Felicity and her mom more than you would have liked is kind of myopic. But to play devil's advocate, Maybe I'm only able to say this because Arrow was never the show that I was the most invested in. I was always more of a Flash guy, so it's possible that something happening on another show might not hit me as hard as someone who's been a huge fan since the start. But while that may be the case, I don't think that should discount my opinion either. 
My point in all of this is saying that this episode shouldn't be judged for the mistakes that the characters in it may have made down the line. Because after having seen it, there's not only a lot to like here, but there's also nothing about Felicity and her mom that I found objectionable. If this is your first episode and you're wondering how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below along with a link to all my other episodes of overanalysis, but I encourage that you watch this one first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. With that out of the way, let's return to the overanalysis. Ben Sokolowski joins first-time writer Brian Ford Sullivan to pen The Secret Origin of Felicity Smoke, which premiered November 5th, 2014, and was directed by series veteran Michael Schultz. Felicity's mother Donna comes to Starling for a surprise visit, as a hacker called Brother I threatens the city's power lines and bank accounts. Meanwhile, Oliver and Thea get into a debate on whether or not she should use Malcolm's money to her benefit. By the way, today's shirt is Don't Rush Me, I'm Waiting for the Last Minute. Oh, stick biting, yes! Oh, and then this in conjunction with Laurel's boxing training? Oh, and it's as well at the same time as Thea sword training? Oh, that was a good transition. That was a Stargirl transition. How do normal people spend their morning? <laughs> oh! The transitions are great, bro. Oh, in in conjunction with Felicity working out too. I believe this is the only time in which we see Felicity's home, and there's a few things I want to point out. Firstly, she owns a PS3, and Felicity definitely strikes me as a gamer. Now I wish we'd gotten to see her invite, like, Cisco or Caitlyn over and for them to actually use this. And secondly is the Robin Hood poster, which is funny, considering who she works with. What's the one thing that Queen Consolidated has that we don't use to its maximum potential? A doorbell? <laughs> Why is he at her home? You want to sell QC's excess energy back to the city. If by sell you mean give away for free? Yes. Aw. What are you doing here? Hi, I came to see you. Didn't you get my text? Mom, to send a text, you actually have to press send. Are you adopted? <laughs> <laughs> so this is Felicity's mom, Donna Smoke, played by Charlotte Ross. I know there's a stigma around this character because of season four. Let, let season four do season four things, give this episode a shot. I didn't know you had somebody staying over. This is my boss. I'm Ray. You're that watch guy. I'm actually wearing a prototype for the new six. It basically replaces your computer. You know what? <laughs> it's yours. This is an important plot detail, believe it or not. You found an exploitable note? Now I just need your supercomputer virus to crack the firewall. I really wish you wouldn't call my x-axis by a numeric algorithm a super virus. Now we meet our main villain of the episode, Cooper Selden, played by Nolan Gerard Funk. And we also get to see Felicity's terrible black hair. For the record, it actually doesn't look that much like a wig, even though it definitely is a wig. Maybe that's just the lighting, but I can believe this. Again, take season four, put it out of your mind. Just pay attention to this episode in isolation. Cooper, what are you doing? I think the world would be a much better place if there weren't any student loans, you, don't you? You can't wipe out all the loans, they'll never think it's a glitch. Ever heard of hacktivism? It's all about what you want to be when you grow up, babe. A hacker? hero oh this is the episode where we first get to see the loft Thea, you're signing a lease on a spot that you can't possibly afford when i left starling city i mentioned something to ned foster about malcolm being my father the entire world thinks he's dead so yes legally his estate goes to his last living heir when you told me that you had investors for the club that was a lie and if you take his money he has a hold on you i'm his daughter okay he's not going to put me in danger You're responsible for the death of 503 innocent people including your brother and that is a card that you do not get to play why not tommy was oliver's best friend sucks for him that tommy's dead too why doesn't he get to talk about it just for the record oliver uh inflation is massively up i would just let her pay for the fucking loft although in oliver's defense he is now trying to do more of the honesty thing. Like, obviously, he's not going to tell her that he's the arrow, but seeing that Thea is now the one that's keeping secrets from him, I can understand why that would kind of be off-putting for him, considering he is trying not to do that. So it seems like a double standard. Like, rules for thee, but not for me. Ooh. Oh, this is a cool shot. Wait, why is there lightning? Hey, Big Belly Burger! Hey, what the fuck super virus can do all this shit? Ooh, that was a cool shot. Let there be light and then all the lights come back on. Fuck you. Did, 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 did. 
God complex having motherfucker. Mom, this is Oliver Queen. How many billionaires do you know? Why is Sarah here? We can't bring her down there. Why not, Oliver? Who's she gonna tell? <laughs> I'm not comfortable with her down there. My mother loves babies. See, I laugh, but in Oliver's position, I would also not be comfortable with a baby down in the arrow cave where there's all the sharp objects like arrows and throwing knives and shit. And also lots of expensive computers, so it's played as a joke, but no, there is reasoning behind it. I noticed it during my recording of the episode, but never called it out. But yeah, that is Starro that is on Cooper's shirt here. I was past the firewall and into the account network. I had 3,000 deaths swipe by the time you pulled the plug on me. By accessing the accounts, you set off a packet's feedback that anyone could trace back to. And it was on his computer, even though it was Felicity's virus. Cooper Sells, FBI, don't move! Under arrest for violation, U.S. Title 18, Section 530. The banks are next to go dark. This is a situation at Sterling National. Send in an ESU squad. I'm acting district attorney. SCPD just dispatched a riot squad to Sterling National. It's like fighting a fire with gasoline. Shoot up. <laughs> Oh! You really can't tell unless you pause, but you can see Oliver's arrow here is green and Roy's arrow here is red. Is that a tear gas arrow? Tear gas is dispersing them, but we can't calm the entire city, Felicity. The virus, I can't stop it. How do you know? I wrote it five years ago. I was in this, I guess you could call it a group. In college, we were hacktivists. I created this super virus. She calls it that because she thinks Cooper is dead and she's trying to honor him. Why didn't you tell me about any of this? You didn't ask. Who else had access to the program? Myron Forrest. I had a boyfriend in college and Myron was his roommate. Can you give me an address? Oh, look at that shot. And I'm going to tell them I wrote the super virus. I already told them I did. I wiped out those loans. There's no reason both of us should be in prison. Hey, look at that. He's doing the honorable thing. Oh, look at that shot. You call in a riot squad? You nearly started one. The situation at Starling National was escalating. You escalated it, Laurel. So the angle that they're kind of trying to go for here is that sending in a riot squad is only going to incite the riot more or is only going to make it a bigger problem. But I'm kind of with Laurel on this one because it's very clear that she's trying to prevent the disaster. And she did not in that moment understand that she was putting gasoline on the fire. She made a mistake, but thankfully Oliver and Roy were there and nobody got seriously injured. What are you doing here, Roy? A super hacker is trying to take over the city and I'm worried about you. But what are you doing here, Ollie? You know, when I asked that, I forgot that Thea owns this place and you could say that Oliver checked the loft before he came here. Someone told me recently that family is pretty precious and love in spite of everything is what makes it precious. And don't take Merlin's money. No, this is not the time! This is not the time! Myron Forrest, you have failed this city. Yes! I love that you can see that they pulled back their bows on the screen behind him. That's so cool. The codes in X axis by numeric algorithm that you've used before. We developed it. We called it a super virus, but that doesn't mean I'm the guy guy. Have you tried Felicity Smoke? She's innocent. Then it's gotta be someone else. I am running out of expletives. <laughs> you can say fuck, Felicity. I mean, not on network television you can't, but you can say fuck. What about your ex? He got arrested and he went to prison. Maybe he got out. He f before sentencing. Oh! I have responsibilities. I know, Felicity, you have work. It is so much more than work. All you care about is my love life or how much cleavage I don't show. I'm sorry that I'm terminally single. I'm sorry I have an actual job. I'm sorry that I don't dress like a which I realize is a compliment to you. So I'm so sorry that I am such a disappointment to you. How many people watching this video right now, present company included, relate to this conversation? Or sorry, not conversation, shouting match. Where it doesn't matter how hard you work or what you do, you will always be a disappointment to a parental figure in your life. Or if not a parental figure, to someone. But this scene's not over yet. It gets better because Felicity is wrong. I'm not as smart as you, Felicity, or your father. Maybe I wasn't always the mother you wanted, but I was always there. I stayed, and I tried. I was always so afraid that one day you were going to leave me too. And now I finally realize you already did. And at the same time, I completely get where Donna's coming from. I can't speak from experience, but when you're a parent, one of the worst things that could happen is for your kids to leave. And I don't just mean like in a like that you leave on bad terms, even your kids like going away to college or moving out to fulfill their dreams. 
that's gonna suck for you. So the realization that Felicity genuinely doesn't value her mom or just sees her as an embarrassment, yeah, that's gonna fucking sting. I know that this just happens in this episode, so the suddenness of it kind of takes the impact out of it, but actually the suddenness is what gives it impact because the writers have, for whatever reason, purposefully not shown us Felicity's parents before. Felicity is a character that has an inherent lack of backstory, and the little bits that we did get were satisfactory enough, but there was no exploration to that. Exploration into her family life and what that was like. And since the episode is being told to us from Felicity's perspective, and Donna is clearly a very overbearing parent, you kind of get why Felicity feels the way that she does and why she ran away from home as fast as she could. I don't talk a lot about my family. I had noticed that. My mother is my mother. I don't really know what my father is because he abandoned us. And Oliver gave an understanding nod, by the way. He gave a, yeah, okay, I, I understand that. But I feel like why this episode works is because this is the first time that we're seeing all this stuff. The suddenness of it doesn't take away from the episode or the season. It adds to it. Where's your mom? Probably back at my place, wishing she had a different daughter. It's a long story. So go see her. Take an hour. The city is under attack. You're a best chance of stopping it, but not like this, Felicity. Your head's not in the game. And this is another scene where I really do relate to Felicity, and I wish that I had someone like Oliver telling me to take an hour and go get myself calmed down. Because this goes for everybody, when you get worked up, you do not do your best work. You say and do things that you don't normally do or don't want to do because you're not in the right state of mind. And when you're not in the right state of mind, your work performance suffers. So this, I actually really like! Earlier today, Thea told me that she literally has to put up with me because family is precious and that it's love in spite of everything that makes it precious. And I like how what Oliver and Thea are going through is impacting what Oliver says to try to help Felicity with her family drama. You'll see that a lot in early seasons of the Arrowverse shows where something that's happening in the B plot of the episode informs what's happening in the A plot. Typically it will be like, the hero learns something about the B-plot because they're going through some conflict, and then the villain of the week happens to be going through that same conflict, so the hero is then able to use what they learn from the B-plot to fix what's going on with the villain in the A-plot. It just so happens here that instead of it being a villain that's the A-plot, it's the broken relationship between Felicity and her mother. This episode's pacing is also very, very good so far. I think that's because the entire thing's happened in one day. I'm glad you're still here. You are a terrible liar, Felicity. Might be the only thing we have in common. I have blonde hair. You dye it. Hey! Good reminder of that! Kind of makes me a cyber terrorist, which is bad because I really don't see myself fitting in well at Guantanamo Bay. Don't worry, Felicity. They don't send blondes there. I dye it, actually. I keep your secret. <laughs> <laughs> My plane ticket, I got an email that said I'd won some contest. Free first class round trip to Starling. Email? You've been fished. Someone wanted you to be here. And they waited until now to do this break in because. Who are you? I thought you'd never forget your first love. <laughs> that line delivery was really bad. The NSA needed a hacker with game for cyber espionage, and I needed to not be in prison. Because of what the NSA wanted me doing, it was advantageous for me to be dead. After I finished my time with the NSA, I was gonna find you. And then I discovered you'd become this corporate lapdog. If you listen close enough during this next part, you can absolutely hear where they splice the two different vocal takes from Emily Bett Records. If you ever thought I was capable of doing something like this, you never really knew me at all. Yes, this part of the scene was dubbed over. For what reason? I don't fucking know. Seriously. How did this make it into the final cut of the episode? Five years with the NSA, you learn a lot about how the world works, how it's every man for himself. You also learn that when a city bank goes under financial cyber attack, the mayor will reach out to the Treasury Department and request an influx of fresh cash. If the drivers deviate from the route, the trucks are shut down. I wonder if that's actually how that works. You are going to hack into the system and direct the cash to come here. It was about money and I'm the sellout. Ha! 
Breaking into the Treasury's asymmetric encryption is beyond even my capabilities. That's why I flew some motivation into town for you. I'm so sorry. Right now's not really the best time, okay? But it might be the last time, hon. And I want you to know that all I've ever wanted is for you to be happy. What say we hit pause on the Dr. Phil episode? They'll be at your front door in five minutes. Stay put, okay? Just because we used to screw doesn't mean I won't use this gun. Oh, that line was really bad. Not just the delivery, I mean the line was really bad. What's that? Uh, it's the watch Mr. Palmer gave me. That's convenient. It basically replaces your computer. It means it has Wi-Fi. That's so convenient. Put the gun down. Ain't no way you got here that quickly. Motion censored. They can hit most any target. <laughs> Is that a fucking RPG? This is the second RPG this season. Sure. Honestly, it's just his own dumbass fault for leaving her arms free. Hey, it's Felicity's theme! Or no, it's Ray's theme. It's one of the two. Well, whoever's theme it is, it's a great theme. My sister, she was murdered. No one knows that she's gone except for me, and I can't tell anyone. See, before, Laurel, you were swinging at your sister's killer. That's a target you're never gonna hit. See, now I know how to teach you. So what's it gonna be, red or black? Black. Definitely black. Why would you even give her that choice? I mean, it was so much easier to be in each other's lives when we were underneath the same roof. So why don't you move in with me? I swear, once the club starts making a profit, I will... Donate all of Malcolm's money. I can live with that. Yeah, because we had to get a scene of Malcolm in this episode. We're paying John Barrowman to be on set. We gotta use him. I haven't always been appreciative of you. You were always there for me. So if I haven't said thank you enough, thank you. Aww. We live in a world, at least in America, where it's not normal to show people gratitude anymore. So I want everyone that's watching, if you made it to this part of the video, just, just go up to your mom or your dad, you know, the people that raised you, or if they're not available for whatever reason, go over to someone that helped you in the last week. Just go up to them in person, not over text or over call, walk up to them and say, hey, thank you for everything that you have done for me. It will make you feel better. It will make them feel better. It will be a nice moment. Just do it. Just show someone some fucking gratitude. Because there is no amount of appreciation that you can show someone that is too little. And if you're not a little bitch, you'll also give them a hug. Ray, I can't come into work today. Calling in sick. Feel better. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 hang on. What was she saying? She said, yeah, you need to do something about that, referring to Ray. <laughs> no, that's not at all smart or a reveal or anything. That's just dumb. Obviously, the core of this episode is Felicity. If she can't handle the load, then the episode does not work. Thankfully, though, this is the Arrow writers we're talking about. Even with the mistakes they've made so far this season, they've still got their heads screwed on straight enough to make a side character focused episode work. Yeah, it might at first seem like Donna stepped out of a completely different show, but the further into the episode you get, the more that that kind of goes away. Unlike Time of Death, which played on Felicity's insecurities, this episode faces Felicity with the emotional baggage that she has. Her father abandoning her, her mother not being present and having a dead end job, her boyfriend's supposed death resulting from her creating the super virus, that past that the writers have been hinting at finally comes out in this episode. And while it might not be as explosive as you might have wanted it to be, it's one that comes with a surprising amount of baggage that Felicity's never fully worked through. And it's in those moments where the episode is at its strongest. I also like that although Cooper does use Felicity as the final part of his plan, He's not seeking revenge for the events of the flashbacks. That's something they very easily could have done in the episode, and it's pretty common to put in flashbacks like the ones in this episode for that exact purpose. 
But here, they just exist as a way to introduce the episode's main players, as opposed to explaining Cooper's motivation, which I think is smarter. Or rather, they're not his sole motivation, which is still better than the trope could be. Sure, you could argue that this episode thinks that the twist is a lot more clever than it really is, and I wouldn't disagree with you if you did argue that, but it's not just a twist for the sake of the twist, as Cooper actually has a motivation and reasons for doing what he's doing. It's not that he has no motivation, it's that his motivation is simple. I have a bad thing at my disposal, every man for himself, so I'm out for myself. That is Cooper's mindset and motivation. The third act is just a bit too convenient for my liking. Sure, I do love me a good Chekhov's gun, see also the Odyssey, but I think this convenience here would be a little more bearable if Ray had said something like, just so you know, the watch is going to try to update in eight hours or something like that. And yeah, there's no way that Oliver and company should have gotten from the Arrow Cave to where Felicity and Donna were being held in as little time as they did. And the final scene of the episode where Roy is dreaming about killing Sarah is just dumb. There's no way around it. It's just dumb. There's a lot of great things in this episode, and it comes together really nicely. It just has a few holes here and there, but when you're watching the episode, you're probably willing to overlook them for one reason or another. Like I said in plot, the strongest parts of the episode are when the episode is exploring the complicated relationship between Felicity and her mother. Felicity is embarrassed by her mother, Donna just wants to spend time with her daughter, both of them are dealing with the fact that Felicity's father left, and they have very conflicting feelings about it. Cooper is a fine antagonist for the episode. He's certainly not as layered as someone like Ted Gaynor, Joseph Falk, or Mark Shaw, but he at least connects to the episode's flashbacks and has a complex that you understand, how everyone is out for themselves. How the episode gets there is a little bit expository, but I wouldn't say it's horrible. But of course, unless you're Felicity, Donna, or arguably Oliver, you're written about average here, and as a result, I can't give this episode that five. This episode has a really cool opening sequence of everyone doing their morning training. It's fast paced, it's well shot, there's a transition in there where Laurel throws this punch that transitions perfectly into Malcolm swinging his sword that felt like something right out of Stargirl. It's a great sequence. There's a few notable things, like the brother eye screens or the city blackout, but the rest of the episode was pretty below average here. And yeah, during the climax, I do think that Nolan Gerard Funk was overacting a little bit. Though, granted, yeah, the script didn't do him many favors. Most of his notable lines were cringeworthy dog shit, while his motivation for his plan is sandwiched in between that cringe and Felicity roasting him. It was about money and I'm the seller. Much like any side character spotlight episode, this one's mostly inconsequential to the season's larger narrative. It's nice to see Felicity get that monkey off her back, but you wouldn't be lost if you skipped it. And I'm only giving it as high of a score as I'm giving it because Donna and Cooper come back in season four. This is a decent episode. Just because the characters it focused on got ruined later, that doesn't mean this episode was bad. Of every episode of the show, this is the one that gets the most unnecessary amount of hate outside of the season four finale. But seriously, flame shields activate. This episode isn't all that bad, and the total score doesn't really tell the whole story here. Sorry, Season 4 haters, you can't bully me into changing my mind on this one. And I hope I'm not the only person willing to say that. At the time that I'm recording this, AA is kinda blowing up. We're somehow getting views in the triple digits, and because of it, we recently hit 400 subscribers. I'm gonna be honest, I have no earthly idea how this happened. I record these videos weeks in advance to try and keep up with my every other week schedule, but I'm just really happy that we're getting more views on this series. Seriously, 300 views on the last two episodes that I uploaded is crazy. Uh, yeah, at the time I'm recording this, uh, the Malcolm episode hasn't gone up yet. That's all I got for this episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. That'd be greatly appreciated. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you can join us as soon as freaking possible. And while I'm plugging everything else, be sure to click the bell so that you get notified whenever we upload one of these crappy videos. But apart from that, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys. This is Demigod Schmurda. Hey,